Hey everyone, it's Erin from WellPlated.com and author of the WellPlated Cookbook. Today I'm going to be showing you the perfect recipe for your leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Creamy Turkey Tetrazzini. This recipe first came about when I had a lot of leftover turkey on my hands after cooking two 22 pound turkeys. Yes, 40 pounds of bird. And it was not just because my husband, Ben, has a notorious appetite. We hosted Friendsgiving for 35 people. We had actually just downsized. I previously lived in a big home in the suburbs. We wanted to move to the city and that meant a smaller place, but I thought, hey, that is not going to stop me from getting some of my favorite people together for Friendsgiving. I've added both butter and olive oil to my go-to Dutch oven. Use whatever the biggest, sturdiest pot that you have is. And then now I'm adding one small chopped yellow onion. I like to use a combination of both olive oil and butter. Olive oil has the higher smoke point, which makes it great for sauteing. Typically, turkey tetrazzini would call for a lot more than two tablespoons of butter, but I am doing a lighter twist that I promise nobody will know the difference. We want to cook until our onions turn soft. Try not to let them get too dark brown. You want a pretty moderate heat, and then just check back on it periodically. You don't need to babysit it. Originally, this Friendsgiving was not for 35 people. We had just moved in, so half of our belongings were still in boxes. But then, you know, I ran into another friend and said, hey, I'm having Friendsgiving, why don't you come and bring your husband? And then two more turned into four more, and then we met our neighbors. At this point, the floodgates were open, so it was just, come one, come all, bring your kids, and really, why not have a way to show even more people in your life that you are thankful for them by sharing a fantastic meal? I have added some mushrooms to our pot. This is 16 ounces and they are cremini mushrooms, AKA baby Bella. They're labeled interchangeably at the grocery store, but they are the same thing. This is the kind of mushroom that I always recommend cooking with. It has so much more flavor than the plain Jane white button mushrooms. And then along with our mushrooms, I have added some minced garlic. I use this shortcut kind in a tube, works in a pinch. We're gonna keep cooking until the mushrooms soften and brown and give up their liquid. That'll take about five to eight minutes. One thing that really made me nervous about this Friendsgiving was I wasn't sure about the space. I thought that we would be able to get enough card tables in here for 35 people, but I didn't actually know until the time came. Turns out that once the card tables were set up, our place was so full you couldn't walk. So we had to wait to put them up until immediately before everyone sat down for dinner. I just added a tablespoon of sherry vinegar. That is for the acid. It adds a little complexity and it also really helps the flavors of all of the other ingredients pop. And then right on top of that, I am adding a quarter cup of white whole wheat flour. This is going to help form the base of our sauce and help it thicken. If you aren't familiar with white whole wheat flour, it is 100% whole grain but it is made from a lighter variety of wheat, so it has a really, really mild flavor. But you still get all of those fantastic whole grain benefits, like more nutrients and fiber than you will find in all-purpose flour. I come from a huge family. My dad was one of nine, and at our Thanksgivings growing up, we had about 40 cousins running around. So that meant you sat wherever you could. Card table, stairs, there were people on the floor, and our Friendsgiving felt just like that. 35 people who are near and dear to my heart sitting wherever they could find a space, on the stairs, the couch, the floor, you name it. Our flour is nice and golden, so now we can add the turkey broth or chicken broth, whichever. Splash it in real slowly and be careful. We have three cups going in, which seems like a lot, but this is a really big turkey tetrazzini and the pasta is going to absorb some of that liquid once we add it. Once your sauce is nice and smooth, just keep stirring and then bring it to a simmer. We want it to reduce by about a third. All right, our sauce has nicely reduced. I can feel it thickening when I run the wooden spoon along the bottom of the pot. So now it is time to remove it from the heat 
and then our pasta is ready to drain. You wanna cook it to a few minutes before al dente. It will still be too chewy to eat, but it's gonna keep cooking in the oven. So by pulling it off a little early, we'll make sure we don't have mushy pasta. One of my absolute favorite parts of that night was looking around the room, seeing all my different friends from all of my different walks of life, most of whom had never even met, completely hitting it off. My girlfriends were talking with my neighbors, Ben's high school friends were exchanging baby stories with some of my college friends. It was really, really special. I'm currently doctoring up our sauce with some good old salt and pepper, key for seasoning. Now I'm adding Worcestershire sauce. This is one of my favorite, just kind of umami bomb ingredients. And what I mean by that is it adds some intense savoriness. It is a trick that I learned from my mama and I use it all the time. Some smoked paprika. This is one of my go-to spices because we are cooking on the healthy side, but we don't want it to actually taste healthy. Smoked paprika is a great way to build in additional flavor. This is four ounces of reduced fat cream cheese. Pinky promise, nobody is going to know that it was reduced fat. So you wanna stir, we're letting the residual heat of the mushroom sauce melt the cream cheese. It will still look a little bit lumpy at this point. Totally fine, it's all gonna come out beautifully in the end. Next, I'm going to add my sun-dried tomatoes that I rehydrated with water and chopped. I really like to use the dry-packed sun-dried tomatoes instead of the oil-packed, just because they save you a little bit of excess oil that you don't need. Also adding a bag of frozen peas. You actually can add these straight from the freezer. They're so small that they'll thaw the second they hit that warm sauce. Now for the cheeses. Got some mozzarella cheese. You also could use provolone. You want just kind of a nice mild melty cheese. Always, always, and I'm just gonna get real bossy with you. Grate your cheese right off the block like this. I know the kind in the bag looks really tempting, but it is coated with a powdery substance that keeps the cheese from caking in the bag and it really just does not melt very nicely. I'm also adding some grated Parmesan. That is gonna be a nice nutty bite. Adds a little saltiness that's fantastic with the mozzarella. And here we go, star of the show, my leftover Thanksgiving turkey. This is three cups. If you don't have turkey, no big deal. You can use shredded chicken. I have lots of different ideas for how to make that and tips on my website. Or you can take a shortcut and just use a store-bought rotisserie chicken. Oh, this looks luscious. I can smell the garlic. Look at these juicy pieces of turkey. The final ingredient that we need for our sauce is one of my favorite stealthy healthy swaps. This is plain Greek yogurt. This recipe calls for about a cup, which conveniently is the size of these little containers. Whatever you do, do not use fat-free or even low-fat Greek yogurt. Fat-free yogurt actually curdles when it hits the warm sauce, so you'll end up with kind of a chunky sauce instead of a smooth, velvety, creamy one. Plain Greek yogurt is what I love to use whenever a recipe calls for sour cream. They're both thick and tangy and rich, but Greek yogurt is much better for you than sour cream because it has lots of protein in it. Pinky promise nobody is going to notice that swap either. Looking back, I cannot believe how poorly equipped we were for this Friendsgiving. Not only did we not have adequate places to, for people to sit, but the island that I'm cooking on right now was not even here. We actually put this in. It was just a small cutting table. Didn't have enough outlets, so there were slow cookers in the back hallway. We had instant pots out front. Uh, we didn't have enough plates. We had to use paper plates because half of our stuff was still in boxes from having just moved in but it did not diminish from anyone's experience one bit. I am tossing our spaghetti noodles. These are whole wheat, huge fan of whole wheat pasta over here. Just like the white whole wheat flour, it is an instant way to up the nutritional benefit of your meal. Doesn't take any extra work and nobody needs to know. You wanna make sure those noodles are all really nicely coated with our rich, creamy Tetrazzini sauce. Grand finale.
Grab whatever your largest casserole dishes, coated with a little nonstick spray. And there really is just absolutely no graceful way to do this. Get it all in. If you don't have a ton of leftover Thanksgiving turkey, this is also an excellent way to really stretch those leftovers and feed a serious crowd. It's also really freezer friendly, so if you don't finish it all right away, just pop it in your freezer till you need it. I'm just gonna spread it out so it's even. I could just take a fork at this right now. <laughs> it looks so good. And then for a nice crispy contrast with the creamy filling we have going on inside, I'm gonna sprinkle the top with some panko breadcrumbs. It's a half cup, you also can eyeball it. You can do crushed Ritz crackers if your family is more into that style topping, homemade breadcrumbs, really whatever you prefer just to add some nice crunch. And that is it. Now the only hard part is waiting while it bakes. I'm gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes until it is hot and bubbly and luscious. See you in a second. Oh, look at this brown crispy top and my kitchen smells like Friendsgiving all over again. I love this recipe, both because it is such a tasty way to use your leftover Thanksgiving turkey, but even more so because it reminds me of the chaos of big family gatherings. That madness is part of what makes them special and the imperfections are often the best part. I would love to hear some of the fun, chaotic moments and memories from your Thanksgivings and Friendsgivings in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more easy, healthy recipes from Well Plated. And if you are worried about your oven being maxed this Thanksgiving, check out these creamy Instant Pot mashed potatoes. They are a total lifesaver. I hope you all have the happiest Thanksgiving. Mm. Now that is Well Plated.